Howdy, howdy, howdy. My name is Anachi Sasuke. Welcome to, uh, or welcome back to Let's Read the SP Foundation Wiki, and this is episode 80. So, in this episode, we're going to be getting into treble, ha, huh? and also reading this block of stuff right here. So, let's get right on into that treble, which is probably a clef joke, although it doesn't seem to be written by clef, it's written by Dr. Sumerian. So, Han hit terminal velocity approximately two kilometers over Ruston, Louisiana. The moon was hiding behind cloud cover. The complex below him, however, was easy to see. He'd tried to jump like this several times during training, but the rush of the real thing was hard to beat. Okay. For the first time in a very long time, Han felt alive. It had been years since SCP-2913 had been removed from the arm of James Howellman. It had been years since Han had any real sense of freedom. A kilometer and a half from above the control room, there was his target. Or th that was his target. The severed hand began to sing. Run and tell all of the angels this could take all night. Think I need a devil to help me set things right. Uh, I was going to go to the com. Han, keep the chat to a minimum. We're not sure if Anderson can crack these frequencies or not. He'd have to get used to people calling him by his name. He he'd been the one to think it up originally, but it felt so strange hearing it out someone else out of someone else's mouth. It wasn't nearly as funny when he thought of it years ago. The voice came back. Han, you're reaching parachute deployment altitude. Get ready to activate it. Yes, sir. Han snapped back. This was it. Time to shine. A few moments passed before the voice returned yet again. Han, de deploy your parachute. Han laughed for a moment, activated the infrared vision on his glove, and surveyed the target building. A single operator was inside. Han, what are you doing? Deploy your chute! Don't worry, I'm gonna... There was a loud crash, a scream, and then silence. Punch that motherfucker right in the mouth at the speed of sound. Dr. Light looked up from the report at Dr. Sumerian across the desk. Other than the slightly colorful language, I don't see an issue here. The op was a success and 2987 is currently feeding us information on Anderson Robotics. Sumerian shifted in his seat. You could have lost an asset and the MTF in that op. When the operator woke up, he sent the whole complex to North Korea. North Korea. Han was supposed to infiltrate and destroy the system. He didn't do that. Light put the report down on the desk. SCP-2913 has been given the latitude to make the calls it deems appropriate during missions. I might as well click and see who the hell this is. A severed hand, formerly belonging to James Hallman, which is capable of independent movement. Approximately 5.7 or 5.1 media centimeters of radial bone. Wait. Was it literally just a severed hand just flying down and, like, without a parachute, and he called himself Han because hand? Han has a serious maturity problem, so Mary shook his head. I know you've seen the same profiles I have. Glasses reports have your signature on them. Yes, and you know as well as I do that if we barred objects with psych issues from participating in Alpha 9, we'd have none to participate. Light copter head to the side. Where is this coming from? The, es the Ethics Committee has signed off on the project. I got the feeling you supported it as well. They have, and I do. That's not the point. I've seen dozens of reports come across my desk about the effect this program may have on the Foundation, or on humanity if it gets out of hand. Uh, but we're not putting much thought into what we're doing with the objects. I picked up a pen from the table and began to tap it, slowly on the blotter in front of her. The objects are safely contained, if that's what this is about. Samarian so raised his hand slightly to interrupt. It's not. I'll be clear. I've reviewed several of these objects. Most have serious mental issues that either can't or won't be treated by us. Han can get therapy, but he may never full come to cope with what happened before he became detached from his host. Medicating Iris might nullify her abilities or screw with them in ways we don't understand. But the Foundation stole most of that girl's childhood. You don't come out of that normal. Light shook her head. These objects were never going to be normal, but I'm trying to provide them with at least a sense of norm normalcy. After we spent years keeping them in boxes? And when in all likelihood they'll go back in boxes after we're done? Oh, Light smirked. So you're already planning for the project's failure. We on the committee can afford to take the long view. All things come to an end regardless of how the dice fall with the project. We will have gained, value, gained invaluable experience to draw on when planning future containment procedures for sentient items. Allowing for more... leniency. I have... I have to mix the long and the short view. If we are able to point to successes, this experience will be brief. 2913 and 105 have both have successful ops under their belt. That's a good thing. Samarian ran his hand through his hair. What do you know about your team members? I've read the dossiers. 
I understand wh what they've been through. Forget what you know. How well do you know the personalities behind the words and numbers? Light stopped tapping on the pen, stopping the pen on the desk, and the two sat in silence for several seconds before Light spoke again. You're right, but we are trying. Maybe before you pin our hopes and dreams on their success, you can spend a little bit of time talking to them. You want them to be treated like they're normal? Start treating them that way. There was a long, another longer pause before Light looked back down at the report in front of her and spoke again. What are the odds that he'd hit that guy right in the jaw? There was another thing I wanted to talk to you about. It's not my field, but by my count, that's three times Hans had an outrageous and improbable result come out of a life and death situation. It might be something you guys want to look into. It's five, actually. There were two undocumented termination attempts by Director Maddox, and we are looking into it already. All right. Sumerian stood up and grabbed his coat. Light smiled. He didn't ask how we knew about Maddox. Sumerian's eyebrows went up. I didn't? Dr. Alto plucked him out to himself and exited Dr. Maddox's cell. Dr. Sumerian was standing on the other side of the door, leaning against the wall. Dr. Clef closed the, closed the door behind him and spun around. What the fuck are you doing here? Clef whispered with a raised eyebrow. Sumerian half smiled. You put in a requisition for a memory sealing object that leaves half the victims catatonic? You had, you had to know one of us would be by. The committee turned down my request. Yet, funnily enough, you just threatened Maddox with it. Cliff shrugged his shoulders. I needed to intimidate him. I'm not saying that we don't trust you, but, uh... Can I see that? Can I see the thing? Clef pulled his hand from his pocket, showing an object attached to his fingers and wrist. Samarian opened his mouth to speak, paused, and then continued. Okay. That's a fingertip vibrator. It is. Why do you have that? Last week was my birthday. Okay. That was... Completely ridiculous, but now we know that there's a severed hand on Alpha 9 Th That can just slam into things to at the speed of sound Anyway, overview Nine years ago, the Foundation was a very different place Support by the United States Bow Commission, the focus was on research and development Cross-testing and weaponization of SCP objects was common Mobile Task Force Omega-7 utilized 76 and 105 to carry out their missions Senior staff members were given extreme freedom and autonomy Autonomy. Ignoring all rules of proprietary and f professionalism, so long as they got the job done. All this was endorsed by O5 Command, the High Court with their magic army. The air was both very good and very bad for the Foundation, but it ended, and it ended badly. There were many incidents that catalyzed the end of the Pandora Box era. Contraki's destruction of Site-19, Incident Zero. The end came when Abel slaughtered the rest of Omega-7. O5 realized they were losing control and cracked down. The old projects were shuttered. Senior staff were kicked upstairs into administrative roles, and in one famous case, assassinated. Research and development of anomalous technology ceased as the Foundation refocused on mere uh, collection and containment. Nine years passed, and we reached the present day. The pace of anomalous incidents is accelerating. Thousands of SCPs have been discovered in only the last few years. New G uh, GOIs are forming and being discovered every day. The Foundation can't keep up. O5 Command is becoming desperate. They wish to once again tilt the scales in their favor. They are reopening research into SCPs outside of containment purposes. They are re-implementing cross-testing and weaponization. Endorsing in-house scientific journals. Creating an entirely new class of SCPs, Thalmiel. Specific to, specifically to contain others. Reopening old case files from the Bow Era. Looking for old swords to resharpen for the new battles to come. They privately call this Project Resurrection. One of those old swords is Project Pandora's Box, Mobile Task Force Omega-7, now known as Alpha-9, Last Hope. Not everyone is happy about this. They remember the bad old days. They worry this is going to be the end of the Foundation. They may be right. Project Resurrection is a writing project aimed at reconstructing and resurrecting the original central storyline of the SCP Foundation. It aims at synthesizing the old and new works of the Fo SCP Foundation. It starts with Alpha-9, the Omega-7 reboot. It doesn't end there. Okay. To be totally honest, I don't even remember how I found this thing. I don't remember which SCP it was that brought me here. I think it was probably 105. Which means I've been bouncing around in Resurrection A9 for the last 200 and something SCPs. Anyway, backstory. I read that, I read that, I read that, I read that. I don't know if I read this. Or is it just... Yeah, right. I already read this one. This, this, the key to our story is O5 Command. Already read that. Oh, it's just a summarization of it. But I'll, I'll do the thing. 
We begin with what has gone before. A lot of the stuff is told is planned to be told in flashback stories, so unless you're planning to contribute to Project Red Direction, I'd hold off so you don't spoil what comes. In other words, spoiler warning. If you're planning to contribute to Project Resurrection, spoil away! Let this inspire your stories. So there's the High Court with the Magic Army. Da, 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 da. Okay, so I think this is just the stuff people are supposed to read if they want to write things for this. So, on the one hand, I may not actually need to read any of this. But if I just don't read any of this, then this is going to be an extremely short episode of Let's Read the SCP Foundation Wiki. Unless I were to just add some SCPs to it. Here we got a bunch of the characters. Last I heard, uh, Actus might be dead, so I wonder I wonder how he's doing. Reading. And here's all the SCPs you gotta read about this. I didn't I didn't read Okay, so I think I'm actually almost at Child of Man. Director Jack Bright seems to be an SCP, so that'll be interesting to check out. So I've read this one, and this one, and this one, not this one, almost at that one, nowhere near these. I think I've read these. I, I had to have read this one, because we're in the 300s now, and I'm pretty sure I've read that one. Let's see. If you require anything else, please do not hesitate to ask sincerely, Carlisle. Group of interest uh, references, the Insurrection, the GLC Hub, the Serpent Hands, and the Uriah Hub. So there's a lot of interesting reading here. Personal log of Agent AA, documentation of Foundation Agent Adrian Andrews. Uh, documentation, document, de documentation of Foundation Agent Adrian Andrews post transformation. Final termination of Adrian Andrews. Pretty sure I've read these. The fly trap. The king is dead. The death of Doctor Kondraki. Black Queen hub. Documentation of person of interest. The Black Queen. So a lot of this seems really interesting. Writer's thoughts. Okay. So. I didn't realize that uh, Resurrection A9 wasn't just a self-contained thing that was happening. If it's supposed to be reworking the backstory of the Foundation itself, it's probably a good thing that I actually went ahead and read all of this. But, um... In the interest of, like, not breaking myself, but also having this episode be longer than 12 minutes, I'm going to go back to reading entries for a little bit. Let's see. We're still in Series 1. In series 1, 2, 3, and 4, and there's 4,000 of these things, and I'm at 300 and something. Let's see. I read Soul Press. I may actually be right at Child of Man, actually. Okay, uh, SCP-321 is to be kept in a regulation containment chamber. SCP-321 has been outfitted with extensive braces to make up for weaknesses in bone structure and muscle mass. Its artificial heart is to be examined once a month for any damage. Okay. Um... SCP-321 is to be fed three times daily. Solid foods are excluded from its prescribed diet. Three, mem three staff members are on temporary SCP-321 assignment at this time. 321 is to be given three hours a day of exercise and physical therapy, with the rest of its time not involved in experiments to be confined to its cell. While 321 is incapable of asking for anything, it has been allowed several stuffed toys. Description: 321 is a human female born 4th of July 18-something. 321 is currently 3.1 meters tall and weighs approximately 110 kilograms. Isn't 3 meters like 9 feet? Hold on. Let's see. Uh, that okay? So they're they're ten feet tall. And what is the uh, the weight? One hundred and ten kilograms. Two hundred forty-two pounds. So she is ten feet tall and two hundred forty-two pounds, and some change. Subject is devoid of any melanins in hair, eyes, and skin. It is incapable of speech, but can still vocalize, and has proven to have problems with uh, spatial recognition and awareness. The 21 has displayed a low degree of intellect and has some problems adjusting to new situations. 321 was the stillborn child of junior researcher Adam Blank and his wife, medical assistant Evelyn Blank. 
Junior researcher Blank took it upon himself to make use of several SCPs, including 590, in an effort to bring his daughter back to life. Is there a story behind that? Your circuit's dead. There's something wrong. Okay, let's open that. The procedure worked, but the result was taken into Foundation custody for examination. The subject was later given to an SCP designation. 321 was quickly found to have recuperative abilities capable of healing injuries inflicted upon it at approximately five times the normal rate. Subject was at this time entered into Foundation records as SCP-321. In the time since, 321's body has continued to age at a decelerated rate, approximately half that of a normal human. Although its aging has been slow, 321 has continued to grow, showing no signs of stopping despite now being taller than any record, uh, recorded human. At this point in time, it is believed 321's recuperative abilities stem from overabundant production of stem cells, a result of its interaction upon death with Redacted. For a period of time beginning in early 19-something, the limits of 321's natural heart were reached, and 321 was too tall for blood to be circulating properly. During this period, 321 was restrained physically in order to keep its heart capable of pumping blood to the brain. Despite this, slow decay was evident and the limits of 321's recuperative abilities were found, as it was not capable of healing damage that was being dealt constantly. Work began in 1948 to create an artificial heart to prolong 321's existence. The heart was completed in 19 blank. Since then, all damage to 321 has been healed. 321 has a very low intelligence, everyday activities are a chore for it, and it can take several months to years to teach it to do things such as use utensils for eating. While 321 has fully developed vocal cords, it seems incapable of learning speech, instead of crying and making nonsense noises as of those typically heard from infants under the age of 6 months. July 31, 31st, uh, requesting 321 be removed from SCP status, junior researcher Adam Blank, request denied. Tried again, denied. We can learn nothing more from 321, suggesting we remove designation Site Director Adam Blank. Uh, he went from Junior Researcher to Personnel Director to uh, Site Director. <laughs> Apparently he went from... <laughs> request denied 05 Blank. Apparently he went from being a Junior Researcher to a Personnel Director to a Site Director to 0512. <laughs> and they still won't do it. Request denied. This is the final time, Adam. She is not now, nor ever has been, your daughter. If you attempt this again, I will gather the council and you will be removed. Oh, he's the one who quit! Oh! That is probably why this is important to the Resurrection A9 project. Because he, he joined the O5 to try to get his daughter back. And they kept saying no. So that's, that's probably why he quit. Huh. Meanwhile... Uh... Let me open that back. Daughter. Which goes to... Your circuit's dead, there's something wrong. I right, Major Tom. So I can only assume that this is the story of 321 happening. And it is very, very long. Oh, there's Jack Bright. Maybe this also is how he ends up becoming an SCP. If that's who it is. I don't know if it's the same guy. But, um, if anybody thinks I should go back and read this Major Tom thing right here, uh, let me know in the comments. Because for all I know, this is also important to Resurrection A9, which... As of right now, I've hit the end of, but it looks like people are going to keep adding on to it, so I'll check back every now and then and do an episode when they've added a few more. So, let's move on. I want this to at least be longer than 20 minutes, so let's also do Grow Your Own Castle Kit and Wendigo Skull. So, I, I, I hope this is safe, but it's probably Euclid. It's safe! 322 is to be contained in a secure locker in Storage Unit 3. 322 can be utilized for certain missions or for research, but a full-length proposal must be submitted and accepted. 322 is a cardboard box, 24 inches in width, 12 inches in height, and 6 inches in depth with the words, Girl Your Own Castle Kit, and a stylized cartoon similar to those in circulation in the 1950s. Sounds like it came from one of the, uh, the vaults in Fallout. Sounds like the kind of thing they'd do. The box contains a small, very simple pamphlet and a glass jar filled with a large, with large grains of sand. The pamphlet states a simple set of instructions that, when followed correctly, will produce a large castle. An exact transcript of the manual is as follows. 
Hey there, kiddo! So you want your own castle, but you don't want to waste your time imagining one? Then this is the kit for you! All you have to do is plant one of the specially made castle seeds somewhere where there's a lot of free space, such as a field, under three feet of dirt! Having trouble digging that all by yourself, son? Then convince an adult to help you by promising him vassalage over some of your soon-to-be kingdom. The next step is just as easy, but just as important. All you have to do is make sure you water your castle every day at 12 o'clock for seven days, that's a week. And make sure you do it too, otherwise it won't work and then you're back at square one. Make sure you follow all the steps and you should have your very own castle in just seven days. Pretty nifty, huh, sport? When these directions are followed, the result is a large stone fortress, including an inner keep, a courtyard, an outer, an outer wall, and the location that the seeds were planted. Placing more than one seed increases the size of the castle twofold per extra seed planted, and the styles Romanesque, Baroque, Gothic, Kremlin, Shiro, et al. depend on the color of the seed that was been planted. On rare occasions when the castle is formed, there is already a staff of servants within utterly dedicated to the original planner, although they are often inhuman in appearance. While no conclusive link between the two has been discovered, SCP-2448 is notably similar in that it is a castle that occasionally manifests humanoid denizens. Additional note, the object was found in Orlando, Florida, 19-something, in the hands of someone trying to turn it into an amusement park. The item was confiscated, and the person in question had their memory purged. Okay. At least it's safe? I mean, if ever there was something to be safe, it's growing your own castle. I mean, even if it is going to be employed with a bunch of things that aren't human. Which is probably creepy. And the Wendigo Skull is Euclid. So... SCP-323 is to be kept in a 17 by 17 by 3 meter concrete containment cell in Site-91. The object is to be restrained in the center of the cell with a 1 meter cubed container of 8.8 .8 centimeters th uh, thick transparent armor lined with a one-way laminate which is to be fit with one electronically locked access port. This container is to be internally lit with the surrounding cell kept dimmer to faci facilitate the one-way laminate. Cells to be surveyed remotely at all times, and any signs of activity are to be reported. No personnel are to enter 323's containment cell except to examine the integrity of the restraint measures. The restraint measures are to be examined bi-weekly, and any signs of damage are to be repaired immediately. All personnel who enter the containment cell are to be accompanied by an armed guard. Personnel are not to be within the containment cell for longer than 45 minutes, and any communication around 323 is to be written or spoken in a language other than English or French. French? In the event that 323 breaches containment and an instance of 323-1 is formed, personnel are to evacuate Site-91 and the site is to be locked down. Remote units are to be deployed to destroy the body of 323-1. Following this, armed personnel may be sent in to reestablish the containment of 323. So... 323 is the skull of an unidentified servant measuring 53 centimeters long, 23 centimeters wide, and 33 centimeters tall with a pair of antlers measuring it 35 centimeters tall and 45 centimeters from tip to tip, growing from the left and right uh, sides of 323. It shows signs of damage consistent with outside exposure, with regular pitting, scarring, and weathering across the object, bleaching on the upper surfaces and a missing lower mandible. Sorry, I thought there was a period there. Bleaching on the upper surface surfaces and a missing lower mandible. The rear of the skull features an approximately centered ovoid gap, measuring 25 centimeters high and 23 centimeters wide, giving access to an interior space 16 centimeters deep. This gap shows signs of tool use, indicating that it was carved with tools, possibly stone. 323 displays the ability to react to aural, tactile, and visual stimuli. Testing has revealed 323 appears to have a field of view similar to that of other cervids, and has responded to visual stimuli from up to 50 uh, meters away. The targeting of specific members of personnel, various attempts to breach containment, and the violent reaction towards speakers of the French and English language suggest a level of sapience. However, this is not confirmed. 323 is capable of limited locomotion, typical in the form of small movements and vibrations. In most cases, it will only locomote in the event of various stimuli, such as moving away when touched or turning when personnel are present within its containment chamber. Yeah. 323 has demonstrated the ability to make larger movements, such as lunging at personnel and repeatedly attempting to force its way through containment measures. 323 exerts an influential rate effect in a radius extending roughly 15 meters from itself. Individuals within this radius will begin experiencing cannibalistic thoughts and urges, violent outbursts, and impaired judgment after approximately one hour of continuous exposure. Roughly 74% of individuals who reach this point will attempt to place their heads through the gap present in the back of 323 with efforts made to keep their mouths uncovered. 
If an individual is incapable of fitting their heads through the gap, attempts will be made to bludgeon their heads against nearby hard surfaces until the point the individual's head fits, the individual loses consciousness, or they die. Once the individual has fit their head through 323, the individual is classified as a 323-1. Within 10 minutes of putting on 323, one will undergo drastic physical alterations. They will experience a rapid loss of body fat, body hair, and pigmentation, followed by the rupturing of the distal uh, phalanges from the fingertips, abnormal tooth growth, and the blackening of extremities consistent with frostbite. Additionally, one appears to experience greater strength and pain tolerance than the average human. However, they still appear to be as susceptible to physical harm as prior to the introduction of 323. One's metabolism will experience a dramatic increase requiring a constant caloric intake, with starvation occurring anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes if no self-preservation efforts are made. In order to sustain its increased metabolism, one will actively seek out and eat other individuals for sustenance until expiration. In the event one is incapable of finding plentiful nourishment, it will make efforts to sustain itself including limiting movement, rationing available food, and auto-cannibalism. One will only feed upon humans. It is presumed that it is, incap that it is capable of receiving sustenance from other sources, but chooses not to, despite availability or ease of access. During the pursuit of individuals, one has been known to make occasionally make various statements in the Severn Ojibwe, Patawatomi, and Cree languages, as well as in the native language of the instance. It is not known if these statements and the knowledge of those languages is the result of 323's anomalous influence or if they originate from 323 itself. Here's an audio log of it. Okay, I thought it was going to make me listen to something. The following audio log has been transcribed from surveillance recovered during this during the, this containment breach of 323. I don't know if that's supposed to be September 11th or November uh, 9th, because I don't know who wrote this. But, um... Which resulted in the death of 12 personnel members before containment could be re-established. No accompanying video surveillance could be recovered. S hungry. So hungry. The sound of dragging can be heard as one's voice becomes louder. I must eat. So very hungry. Always. Always hungry. Several thumbs can be heard, followed by a wet crack. Must. Not eat. I have to eat. So hungry. So lonely. What is presumed to be 323-1's eating can be heard, accompanied by what sounds like panting. Lone. Hungry. Should. Eat. Must. Must. Eat them all. I must eat to know warmth. 323-1 creates a loud vocalization followed by a wet thumb. So cold! Must eat! 323 was recovered in, uh... Whenever this is. In the Bittern Lake res Reserve, part of the Lac La Ronge First Nation in Saskatchewan, Canada. Saskatchewan. I don't think I said that right. I think it has more syllables than I just used. A uh, blank blank, a small unregistered community, have been sustaining an active one instance by routinely murdering individuals and leaving them out as an appeasement. Investigation revealed blank individuals were involved, who were interviewed and subsequently administered amnestics, and a cover story involving an unidentified serial killer was propagated. One, at the time suspected to be the anomaly, died of starvation during its transfer to Site-91. The recorded number of deaths does not appear consistent with the duration of one's instance. It is suspected that 323 went through several instances of one before containment. However, no irrefutable evidence supporting one's longevity has been uncovered. <clears throat> James Nabagus, an individual uh, involved in the murders and sustaining of one prior to its containment, was brought in for internet questioning involving one. Mr. Nabagus remained unusually calm throughout and after the interview. Following the interview and containment 323, Mr. Nabagus was administered amnestics and was reintroduced to his community. Please state your name for the record. James Nabagus. I don't know what kind of voice he's supposed to have. He's in Canada. I don't feel like trying to do a Canadian accent after doing the... Uh, I did a Wendigo voice, so you're going to have to cut me some slack for not being able to do a Canadian accent right after being a Wendigo. <clears throat> Please state your involvement with the murders. I helped move the bodies for the Wendigo to eat. What do you know about the object? There's the story of the Cree men, back when fighting was common, who tried to control the Wendigo to give his people an advantage. It was just a story. The elders knew more, but we were safe, so we didn't ask. When did you first encounter the entity? One night, I heard yelling around all around the village. A warped man walked out of the woods, killed our friends right in front of us. Sometimes it would stare more than it would. Uh, sometimes it would stare more than it would make to kill. Try to talk to you. 
it whispered at me, Pemisto, come and eat. It made me cold in my bones. And then? Then I felt like I could understand the Wart's Man, the Wendigo, and that we could leave with him like we all do when we pass. When I was made to kill, I thought of this and it calmed me. I didn't run. Mr. Namagus closes his eyes and exhales slowly. After a minute, he resumes talking. It looks that it would look at me sometimes. I could hear him in my mind. I could feel him watching me from out of my own eyes. This helped me watch these people die, and I hoped it would pass on my family. Thank you, Mr. Namagus. Final note, no mental effects similar to what Mr. Namagus stated have yet to be reported by staff who've interacted with 323 or 323 -1. Further investigation into this is not planned. However, staff are encouraged to report any atypical thoughts or feelings experienced while working with either. So, I was looking forward to getting to the Wendigo Skull because I wanted to see how this website would handle talking about Wendigos. And I kind of ripped my throat to shreds a little bit, so it's a good thing I was going to stop after that. That being said, this has been Anashi Sasuke. This is episode 80 of Let's Read the SCP Foundation Wiki. If you liked it, a like and a subscribe will be groovy. If you didn't, you don't need to do either one of those things. And I will see you all in the next one. Later.